OK, so you want to run a macro when a cell value changes in your Microsoft Excel worksheet. I'm going to show you three examples. One where a single cell is going to trigger the macro. Secondly, where changes within a range of cells trigger a macro. And thirdly, where changes to a drop down list triggers the macro. Now, the solution to this requires some VBA code. And there's a link in the description of this video to the code that you need. And we'll start by looking at the single cell triggering a macro. So right click on the sheet tab and then go to view code. And then in the visual basic editor, you need to change the option in this drop down list to worksheet and then this drop down list to change. And then you can delete the second sub procedure. Now what we're using here is the worksheet change event. And by default, if there was any change within the worksheet, the macro would be triggered. We want to specify that there's a particular cell within the sheet that's going to trigger the macro. So I'm going to paste in the code that I've provided with this video. And let's see if we can understand what it's doing. The key thing to understand is this word target. So that's the particular cell that you are changing in your worksheet. So what we're doing here is we're saying if the target address, so the address of the cell that we're changing is C3, then we want to run the macro. Now my macro just shows a little message box saying you changed the value in cell three, but you would put your macro in this position. And also obviously you can change which cell triggers the macro. Mine's currently C3. You can change it to the address of whatever cell you want to trigger this macro. So let's see how this works. If I go into the cell and make a change, then it displays the message box. Okay, in the second scenario, we want any cell within a range of cells to trigger the macro. So again, I'm going to right click on the sheet tab, go to view code. I'm going to make the same selections up here in these drop down lists. And then I'm going to delete the second sub procedure there. And I'm going to paste in my code between these two lines of existing code. Now the condition for running the code is slightly different here. Target means the same thing, the cell that you're actually changing, but we're using the intersect method here. And basically we're saying, is there an overlap between the cell that we're changing and range C1 to C10? So if that overlap is not nothing, so if there is an overlap, then we run our code. Let's see how this works. If I type something in one of these cells, it tells me actually which cell has changed. And you can see it will work for any cell within that range. But if I change the cell down here, the macro wouldn't run. Now for the third macro, the easiest thing to do is copy the code that I've provided, right click, go to view code. Don't bother changing anything up here, just paste all that code in. So we've actually got three sub procedures here. Let's look at this sub procedure first. It's pretty much the same as the sub procedure we used for the single cell triggering the macro. But we've got an extra condition for the macro being triggered. Now, curval is a variable that I've created that's going to capture the current value in the drop down list before it changes. And I'm capturing that as the worksheet is activated. So as the worksheet is selected, I'm also capturing the current value in the drop down list whenever there is a selection change in the sheet. And I'll show you how that works. If I just minimize this. Now by default, if I change the selection in the drop down list, it runs the macro. But if I come out of that sheet and then click back on it, what it's going to do is store the fact that one is already stored in the drop down list. So if I go into the drop down list and select one, it doesn't run the macro because I haven't actually changed the value that's been selected. Now, if I change it to two, then it does run the macro. Now, if I select another cell and then go back to this drop down list and select two again, it also doesn't run the macro. So if we go back to our code, you can see that the variable is stored based on the worksheet activate event and the worksheet selection change event, which basically prevents this macro running 
if the drop down list is used, but the same value is selected. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.